Good afternoon. It's Tuesday, May the 25th, 2021. Sago, David Lahashu Jutz. Welcome to another edition of the COVID-19 Task Force Update on this, our 212th edition of Gahnawagi 911. Joining us today will be Lisa Westaway, the Executive Director of the KMHC. She has lots of information for you as we move into our next few phases. Lisa? Thanks, Dave. So I wanted to provide a quick uh, summary of the updates regarding vaccination. We've spoken about this a few times, but I think it's important and uh, valuable to give this information again. So uh, first to start off June 3rd, 4th and 5th, we will be receiving uh, 400 doses of Pfizer for 12 to 15 year olds. You can make your appointments as we speak right now. The sooner the better on uh, Gunawage 911, click, uh, click Santé link and you can make your appointment. Really important for this age group to be vaccinated as again, it uh, contributes to safety within the community, safety of our elders and a safe and successful return to school and reopening uh, within the community. So uh, we stress the importance of vaccination for 12 to 15 year olds. Um, anyone under 14 needs to be accompanied by a parent so that we can provide you with information and you would provide informed consent. Uh, one of the main areas that we will discuss with you when you come in are the fact that uh, the Pfizer vaccine in 12 to 15 year olds has shown an increase in uh, side effects, fever, fatigue and headache mainly. Um, and so it's important that you be aware that the, this uh, is a possibility, um, but it still does not outweigh the benefits of vaccination. Um, if you cannot come in with your child uh, then we, uh, who is under 14, then we ask that you complete the consent form which is online ahead of time. Give it to your child and the person that's accompanying them with your cell phone number so that a nurse can call you at the time of vaccination and you can then provide your informed consent verbally over the phone. Um, the week after, so June 7th, 14th and 25th, uh, 21st, sorry, for those three weeks consecutive, um, fi uh, five or six days a week, we will be vaccinating second doses of Moderna. So we're expecting to receive approximately 3,000 doses and uh, we are in the process now of uh, booking those appointments. So many of you who have received your first dose received a second appointment at the time that you came into the bingo hall. So we're going to be cancelling those appointments and rescheduling them. So you'll receive two text messages or two emails with a cancellation notice and then with a booking of your appointment. Um, and so that is happening this week, uh, only at the end of the week. So if you um, have not heard from us, then we'll be providing you with a phone number for you to contact us at. So again, please just wait for those messages or wait for our phone call to book your second dose. And at the the end of the week if you haven't heard from us we'll be giving you um, a process so that you can make sure to get your second dose. Um, second doses are really really important we have the same goal as we had in our first dose 75 to 80 percent success rate um, why do we uh, push for second doses? It just increases our level of protection. The efficacy rates increase um, drastically in, in real life. So we know in trials, efficacy rates after one dose was at uh, 93, 94%. However, what we're seeing uh, in, uh, in the science and in the research that's coming out is that one dose, we're really at an efficacy rate of 64% about. So this second dose will increase uh, efficacy rates to to the 93 percent and um, it's really important because we're also seeing that two doses is effective against many of the variants of concern that we're seeing in Quebec so we really encourage you to get your second dose even if you've already had one dose. So again, three weeks will be uh, at the bingo hall vaccinating for second doses the week of the 7th, 14th and the 21st. 
Um, and the week after that, June 28th, we'll be arranging for second doses for 16 and 17 year olds. And that will be again with Pfizer and we'll be giving you more information as we get closer to that date. So our vaccination campaign continues. It's been really successful. Anybody who wants to have a first dose during any of those weeks will be able to. So we ask you to call the public safety number, leave your, um, your information so that we can be sure to schedule you in during one of those weeks for your first dose. And we thank uh, the pharmacies of the community who continue to offer, who have offered or continue to offer first doses to uh, community members. So we know that the uh, pharmacy at KMHC vaccinated eight people last week and um, the Old Malone Pharmacy vaccinated several community, community members as well uh, prior to that. So thank you for that help. It continues to add to our percentages. We still have not jumped to the 75%, but I feel like we might get there soon. So we uh, keep encouraging people to get their first dose. It's still really important and it's our best form of protection and it's our best way out of this pandemic. So speaking of uh, reopening, we want to thank the community for uh, this past weekend where we know we moved into code orange or an orange level of, um, of, of I can't think of the word. <laughs> so at or we moved into orange um, and uh, we had our first phase of reopening. Uh, so restaurants opened and although there were a few issues here and there, uh, mainly with respect to uh, only one household in a restaurant at table. Um, otherwise, uh, we only heard positives about, about the reopening. So just a reminder that at this particular time, uh, it is only Ganawage community members who are able to go into the restaurants, whether it's inside or outside on the terraces. And it is only one household that can sit together at a table at the restaurants. We know it's restrictive, but it's just the first phase. It's just a start and it ensures ensures a safe, gradual phase reopening. And uh, as you know, we will be presenting uh, after our task force meeting tomorrow, uh, we will be presenting on Thursday, the next phases of the reopening plan, which will bring about changes to those uh, initial uh, measures that we now have in place. But we thank you for your patience and collaboration and follow through of the measures and, uh, and all, is, uh, all is really following through quite nicely. So thank you for that. We still have zero active cases in the community. Uh, we continue to test. As you know, the testing center was closed today, but will reopen tomorrow. Um, and uh, we don't have anybody in the community who is presently in isolation that we know of. Um, so again, there could be instances of cases, uh, positive cases or people in isolation that we haven't been made aware of. But of, the, of what we know, there are zero active cases and zero people in isolation. So this is all positive news uh, and is, um, is following the trends that we're seeing uh, throughout the province with a significant decrease in cases under 500 for the past several days. So this is all really good news uh, for the province as well as our community, uh, which is impacted by what's happening around us. So based on all of these changes and uh, decrease in measures, I am really happy to be able to present to you some changes that will be taking place over the coming weeks for inpatient at KMHC, T-Bell and ILC visitation. Um, so I'm going to go through uh, a few changes that are coming. However, all of these changes will not be immediate. They won't happen as of tomorrow morning because they all require planning and um, implementation of safety measures to ensure that even though we move towards these reopenings, that we uh, do so in a safe way because we can't forget, and we did put out a memo about this uh, earlier today, I believe, or yesterday, about risk. Um, we still have risk. There is risk around us. COVID still exists. And therefore, it's really important that all the measures that we put in place are done so in a really phased approach, a systematic way that ensures safety. So I'm going to present to you a summary of the changes that are coming, but I really urge you to speak with um, or to, to speak with either uh, KMHC or T-Bell or ILC. Um, 
uh, employees and, and to wait for us to put out the different changes that are happening as they come. And we hope to implement these changes over the course of one or two weeks. So the first change right now is that um, we will allow a maximum of three people, uh, three visitors to be identified per resident for visitation inside the room. So this is still rather restrictive because the biggest risk that we have right now is indoors. So you'll see a lot of changes and decrease in measures for outdoors. Inside, we're increasing visitation to three, but there's still only one visitor at a time, uh, but a maximum of three people can be identified per resident. If some people have more than three natural caregivers at this time, it will be maintained, it won't be reversed. So, but for anybody who doesn't have natural caregivers, we increase to three visitors. There are still uh, appointments that will be required, a registry, um, assessment of symptoms. All of the existing measures that we have in place to ensure safety will remain despite the changes in these, um, in these directives. So um, on the grounds of the residents, so outside, however, we can accommodate visitation for up to five people and all at one particular time. So five people at a time can visit with a resident or uh, someone at T-Bell or someone at ILC at one time uh, if you're outside. So there's no movement within uh, the establishments. However, you can be separated at a appropriate distance outside five people. Um, walks. Walks are also going to be permitted in the very near future between the resident, uh, either the resident if they're autonomous, so for example somebody um, who lives at T-Bell who uh, is medically, clinically able to walk on their own, they can walk on their own, uh, however uh, if not, can be accompanied by one or two visitors and that can be on or off uh, the grounds of the, uh, of the organization or establishment. Um, another main change is um, is with respect to um, walks inside. So if um, uh, the resident understands the eye infection prevention and control measures, they can walk now freely inside of the establishment. So uh, at KMHC inpatient, we, can, we are not implementing this measure. However, uh, perhaps at T-Bell or ILC, uh, if, if, uh, if the resident does understand the implication, the two meter distance, mask wearing, and all of the measures that need to be implemented, then walks inside are also permitted. Um, the biggest one that I think will make families very happy uh, is about uh, the walks, but all outside walks, but also about outings. So outings to restaurants, banks, pharmacy, to the mall, uh, to a family member's home uh, on a day visit, um, these will be permitted as well. Um, they will be supervised by uh, a family member if uh, necessary. Um, they can be, the resident can be accompanied by one or two people. Um, and, uh, and so these outings will be permitted uh, as soon as we put the procedures together to ensure safety. Um, anything over 24 hours or anything over that same day leave uh, is not permitted at this time and no leaves will be permitted uh, for residents to attend gatherings. That's really important. Um, so I think that's the summary. That those are the major changes that we have to present to you today. Again, really important to understand that uh, when we implement these measures, it isn't without risk. We always have risk. And therefore, family members who accompany residents on outings, on walks, have a responsibility. Our residents have a responsibility to protect themselves, but their behaviors impact the collective. And therefore, we all have a responsibility to protect each other. So. Um, ensuring that infection prevention control measures are in place uh, 
at all times is especially important. Um, visitors uh, will also receive training on infection prevention control measures. In certain instances, there may be supervision as well from staff members, uh, at least until we get things going. So um, this is a big, a big change uh, for all of us. For some, again, it's a positive change. For all, it's a positive change, but for some, it will be welcomed. For others, it will cause anxiety. So we ask that we be patient. For staff uh, at all of our uh, establishments, this is difficult. To <laughs> we're really super excited, but we're also stressed because, again, it's a big change for us, and we've been in protection mode for so long that to let go of that uh, is, is difficult. So we just ask for your uh, your collaboration with respecting the rules so that we can ensure to limit risk as much as possible throughout all of our establishments um, and we thank you again for uh, everything that you've done over the course of the past year and a bit it's been really difficult and now uh, we're really looking forward to these changes thank you Thank you very much, Lisa, for that update. Of course, it's a lot of information and a lot of good news as we see the light at the end of this COVID-19 tunnel. And that's it for today's edition. Please join us on Thursday. We'll be back here to provide you with more updates. And from all of us here, thank you very much for joining us. Yawagoa danu onagiwahi.